and good evening. Here we are. Here we are on a lovely Tuesday. Um, the world is still obsessed with a Russell brand. And now I have put my notes down, which I shouldn't have done. There we go. Anyway, off we go. So this evening, we, as usual, have to deal with the ridiculous news of Russell Brand. Now, Mr. Russell Brand, who had 200 million views in 2017 and has had um, 1 billion views in 2022 on YouTube, has now been silenced by YouTube effectively, which is about time. Um, Ah, we have arrivals in the building, so hopefully there won't be too much noise to interfere with the program, which has only just started, so we need silence in the house. <laughs> and, um, yeah. no, we need um, silence in the house. So, um, so Russell Brand has been, um, I do apologize viewers about the noise in my house. This is too much. We don't need noise in the background. It's too much having naughty people making noise. We can't have that. Um, the schedule will not allow for that. But Russell Brand has had you know ridiculous numbers of viewers seven million viewers alone in the last year it's too much um this man has cultivated and groomed a new mentally malleable cult following the distrusts both women and the media so he can continue getting high on his own drug of choice the spotlight says one american writer um, he's received support from the likes of Andrew Tate, Elon Musk, Katie Hopkins, all manner of wicked people. Um, you know, the far right radio host, Alex Jones, who owes one and a half billion in damages to the families of the victims of the 2012 Sandy Hook school shooting, said, the matrix is coming after russell brand anybody that challenges the globalists anybody that challenges big pharma anybody that's popular that comes out against the establishment is going to be accused of assaulting women this is utter drivel it is utter nonsense he says now because he comes out against the new world order suddenly the allegations are happening to him one fan said after allegations he abused women Somewhere along the way, Russell Brand woke up and became a powerful dissenting voice who no longer served their agenda. No wonder they are desperate to destroy him. Uh, PR guru Mark Borakowski, who I have met, believes Brand has built a cult following. He will be willing to back him despite the horrendous accusations about the treatment of the women. Um, I've read that some people say he's a monster. And other people say he's not a monster. But this is a revolting man whose dog went around killing a wallaby. That is disgusting and shameful and revolting. And how dare he? And this horrible man and his horrible bunch of followers should be reminded of the way they treated the Sachs family when they caused no manner of troubles. Utterly appalling and shocking and wrong we do not like um in this household um and the people i've spoken today in the magnet the voice of reason from the magnet uh, kate kate is somebody who has a strong dislike and believes russell brand to be the new jimmy savile now I think that Kate will, is completely correct. I think we will find this is the tip of the iceberg and further allegations will follow. The discussions I mentioned yesterday about Alice, the lady who spoke to Radio 4, Woman's Hour, um, Alice um, 
was 16 when she met him. The relationship was therefore consensual, even though her parents tried to stop her being in such a relationship. But Alice would like to see the age of consent changed. I think that that is not going to happen, and I think that is equally ludicrous, because you have to have an age of consent set somewhere. Her argument is that in 1885, when the age of consent was set at 16, the average age of life expectancy was 40 years old. Obviously now, people are living well into their hundreds. Um, I know several people who are doing very well at that. So therefore, um, Alice thinks the age of consent should be increased. Now, if we did that, when somebody got attacked, if, say, the age of consent was 21, people would then say, um, well, it should be increased again, don't they? So I don't think that that is a logical course of action. So I don't actually agree with Alice, but I do agree that Russell Brand is a dangerous, predatory individual. It is clear that he behaved appallingly. He, it is clear that he was enabled by other people because they did nothing to stop him. And um, it is quite correct that there are now investigations going on to, into him. And I do hope that Mr. Russell Brand finally is properly investigated. Um, you know, he used to kick, kick his dog, says Victoria. Well, that's not very nice. Is it? That's, that's equally appalling. And some local people down here today have been having a discussion about their horrible neighbours. Now, how dare these horrible neighbours attack the wonderful local celebrity dog? It's a famous face, this dog. They moaned and said the dog should be given an ASBO. Now, that is utterly reprehensible. We all support the local dog. Um, these people, if they don't like the dog's noise, why don't they go and live on Exmoor? Why don't they go and live on the Shetland Islands? Go and live somewhere else. Don't be nasty to the local dog that's very much loved and respected in the local community. We don't like people who are rude and cruel to animals. Absolutely shocking. And Russell Brand and his dog, his dog was out of control and his dog killed a wallaby. That is utterly appalling. That dog should have been taken off him then. Instead, he appeared on TV shows with it cuddling it and behaving like the utter bozo and moron that he is. Utterly appalling person. Um, Brand saying publicly he kicked his dog downstairs when he, he was young says a lot about him and says busted. Well, that is utterly appalling. Um, Lauren asks, where did it kill the wallaby? Please read the Steeple Times because um, I referenced the article um, where I talked about how he murdered the dog, murdered the wallaby in Henley on Thames, where he lives. He lives in a house called the Thatched Cottage. It was a place where they filmed Lewis, the sequel to Inspector Morse, and it's a thatched cottage. It is called the Thatched Cottage, a bit of a predictable name for a predictable prat. Um, and recently he has bought a pub. Now, this pub, he has also been up to no good with the pub. And the council, in South Oxfordshire District Council, have slammed the comic, as they call him. I wouldn't call him a comic. I'd call him a calamity. Um, for putting out un unauthorised fencing barriers around the pub on Sunday morning. This man has no right to put up these fences. Shame on him. It's a grade two listed pub. Before he put up such fences at the Crown Inn, um, which is somewhere in Oxfordshire, he jolly well should have got planning permission. And as many people said, why is this non-drinking vegan buying a country pub? You know, the locals of the Crown Inn, Pil Piss Hill, Piss Hill. The name is quite funny enough. Um, I suppose they're all a bit pissed up in Piss Hill. Um, but there we go. Um, 
you know, they they have an open planning enforcement investigation, which includes the unauthorized fencing. This man is a utter piece of tow rag, and he he should have left this beautiful village pub, a 15th century coaching inn, which includes a pub garden, outdoor seating area, detached barn, stable building, two-bedroom cottage, and a garage. Um, whether he could house house his friend Nigel Farage in the, the garage or the garage, the Farage in the garage is another matter. Um, he claimed recently the intention is to reopen the public house, but he wants to launch his stupid non-alcoholic spirits or whatever he wishes to sell. The man is a complete pest. And he should not be allowed to break planning laws. So come on, South Oxfordshire County Council. Time you enforced this man and stopped him turning a beautiful pub into a vegan diner. What sort of revolting thing. One local said, we've heard he's planning to turn the pub into a vegan restaurant. Why would anyone want that? He's clearly never had the intention of using a pub as a pub. He doesn't even drink alcohol. Why buy a pub if you don't drink? Quite right. We quite agree with that local. It is time that this little pest, Russell Brand, is um, stopped. Oh, supposedly the, the locality is pronounced, according to Alex, Pizzle. Well, it still sounds like pissed up. So there we go. Um According to Bella Boo, somebody wants me to go on their channel to talk about brand. Um, I don't know how you know this, but um, there you go. You're entitled to say. Um, I don't know who wants me to go on their channel to talk about anything because I have heard no information about such. And I'm here talking to you directly. So um, for the moment, I will talk directly about Russell Brand. Um you're vegan, but you adore red wine, says Andrea Bono. Well, we've been having a nice glass of Chianti ourselves here tonight, and uh, um, this will at least be on the level of Max Clifford. Well, I would say that this whole scandal, um, according to the esteemed local in the local pub, The Magnet, will be make Jimmy Savile look like the tip of the iceberg. This man has been very open because he was filmed more, because he came later. We actually see more evidence of what this person did, because with Jimmy Savile, most of it occurred in an era when we didn't have the internet. This man's life has been lived out on the internet. His revolting behavior has been there for us all to see. And lots of people have realized this, and now they see it for the truth. Um, Bambi says, I bet he's got rid of his computer. I bet, yes. I wouldn't imagine um, anything less, Bambi. I would think um, that a woman um, who was involved in the court case with um, Colleen Rooney, uh, Rebecca Vardy, who didn't know where Davy Jones's locker was, um, has probably sent the computer the same way you know it's probably at the bottom of that very ocean just like um the witness in the colleen uh, wagger for christie case against rebecca vardy where allegedly the mobile phone with all the whatsapp messages went straight in the ocean um one of you here sebastian says free alex belfield um whoever you are sebastian shite um, you are now blocked because Alex Belfield is an evil, nasty back here with your poisonous views. I respect people's right to freedom of speech, but not people who go around trolling people and being malicious in the way of Alex Belfield. Paulie Galtere says Alex Belfield belongs in the bog. Yes, I'd say she belongs on the, uh, he belongs on the Bibby Stockholm. Um, are you going to sing Gangam Spell? No, I'm not. No, I'm not planning on doing that this evening for anybody. Um, 
And um, I think we've probably done enough about Russell Brand for one evening. Um, we shall move on to another story. And there's a gentleman I know who's a photographer. He's called Edward Lloyd. And Mr. Edward Lloyd is a well-known London photographer. And he today sent me an email about Jimmy Choo. Now, Jimmy Choo has launched an atelier boutique. And he's now Professor Jimmy Choo OBE. Um, he's a Malaysian. And he's famous for his shoes. Um, and he's going to be having a place called the Atelier London. It's a new flagship boutique, according to the photographer in London's Connaught Street. And he had a party, which he didn't invite me to. Though I did once judge a competition with him. I'll come to that in a moment. Anyway, the party was at the Five Star Claridge's Hotel, um, where Laurent Perrier champagne flowed freely. And it was greeted by the master of design, Jimmy Chu, according to Mr. Lloyd. An army of talented creatives backstage dressed the glamorous models in Jimmy's astonishing and beautiful outfits drawing appreciative applause from the runaway runaway guests. There we go. So Professor Jimmy Chu is opening another boutique, and he had guests, not one of many, who I recommend. Dame Zandra Rhodes, well, she was there. And there was also Christina Estrada, who happened to be once married to one of the richest people in the world. Um, someone called Alistair Guy, who I've never quite fathomed who he is. And they were pictured with a lady, Victoria Harvey, who has also been making a nuisance of herself. Yet again, Miss Victoria Harvey, Lady Victoria Harvey, I do apologise, um, has been going on about how Ghislaine and Prince Andrew are going to be exonerated. And she had to quit America because she feared for her life. Uh, Lady Victoria really should put a sock in it. She's utterly ridiculous. And the man she's been going around with, Mr. Mr. George Tonks, who has been bombarding me with his Barry Bowl, his utter drivel should be quiet. There was also the lovely Liz Brewer, who is a delightful lady, um, a very nice former neighbour of mine, absolutely lovely lady who works with Dame Shirley Bassey. Um, other guests at this this gala included um, many people I have never, ever heard of. Kimberly Garner, God knows who she is. Magda Swider, Yu Lo, who was wearing very strange shoes. Um, Colonel Massani, whoever he may be. I'm not sure who he is. I'm sure he's a distinguished gentleman. Um, Lady Victoria Harvey pictured yet again. She likes getting a picture. Um, and uh, Christina Raptis, I have no idea who she is. Raffaella de Pascali and Wendy Tan. Anyway, Jimmy Chu. I once had to judge a competition with Jimmy Chu. And it was at a restaurant in Belgravia near near Victoria Station called the Mango Tree. And we had done a deal with one of the vodka brands I used to be involved in from Australia, the Vodka O, and it was a competition for lady boys. And there was me and Jimmy Chu judging a competition for lady boys in a Malaysian restaurant, and it was quite extraordinary because Jimmy Chu is a very small man. He's not, he's rather diminutive. He's a clearly very talented man, but he's not the largest in life. And um, he came through and he said um, he wanted his coat back. And he screamed at the top of his voice, It's Jimmy through, I, Jimmy Chu, I'm coming through. And they went, who is Jimmy Choo? And then he roared like a lion. It was quite extraordinary to see. I have never come across such a, an extraordinarily loud little man. Um, he was 
very petite, as Bambi points out. Anyway, Mr. Professor Jimmy Chu was in business with a lady who I used to know, Tamara Mellon, who was married to Matthew Mellon. And Mr. Mellon sadly died of um, an overdose because uh, he, he was the Mellon banking family. Um, but he used to ring me up and uh, send or send me messages on Facebook tell, ask, saying, I saw you in Malibu last night when I, was in, I happened to be in London. So we had curious things with them. But anyway, that's the, the Jimmy Chu is reinventing himself. But, but of course, Jimmy did not do well out of the business of Jimmy Chu shoes because Tamara Mellon sold the company um, for 101 million and um, Jimmy only got 10 million allegedly. So it wasn't exactly a great result for Jimmy Chu, but he did get 10 million, which is better than nothing, I suppose. But um, he did have a wonderful shop in Old Church Street in Chelsea and um, and Tamara Mellon and her husband, who she subsequently got divorced from and he subsequently died, did have a wonderful shoe company called Harry's of London. And I did have a few pairs of those shoes and they were rather lovely shoes. But um, there we go. They got divorced in 2005 and sadly, um, Matthew Mellon died a number of years later. Um, they were known for their dramatic marriage and referencing snorting her way through alpine ranges of the cane. Um, their drug problems were epic, and it was a very sad and difficult situation. Um, so poor old Jimmy Chu was sucked into this whole saga, and that was a very sad state of affairs. You say cobblers to Jimmy Chu. Oh, well, I think he did have made a lot more money than most cobblers. So I'd say, I'm sure, Neil, he would say cobblers to you. Um, there we go. Anyway, I'm not drinking much. Well, I'll have another drink just for you. Cheers to you and cheers to me and cheers to me if we disagree. That's how I should leave that. Cheers to you, Julie Rowling. Alex, is there a quiz? There will be a quiz coming up. Claudia says, poor Jimmy. Um, Angela asks, is Jimmy Chu still alive? Well, he couldn't have had a launch party um, for his new shop if he were dead, could he, Angela? So that's pretty obvious as an answer. Um, Amanda prefers the chat to a quiz. Um, Matt Grant is feeling a bit melancholy after that story of Jimmy Choo. Oh, dear. Well, and Matthew Mellon and all the other sad cases. Well, I'm going to move along to another topic of scandal. and. Uh, now, Diane Abbott is a dreadful, ridiculous woman who wants had sexual relations with Jeremy Corbyn. Could you imagine anything worse? And the pair of them used to go around together on a motorcycle. Diane Abbott's son has been uh, arrested um, repeatedly for a very violent crimes, including biting police officers' in noses whilst high. Um, and she is a hypocrite. She is the most strange, ridiculous woman and she should be removed as an MP because Hackney Abbott, as she calls herself, is a complete nutcase. She is of no use to man nor beast. She is somebody who tells everybody that they shouldn't send their children to private schools but send her own kid to one. She is a ludicrous pest. She is a force for bad. She is... She is vile about Jewish people. She's vile about Irish people. She's vile about travelers. She comes out with the most vicious tongued, sick remarks. She can't even add up, points out Debonair. And they wanted her to be shadow, to be home secretary. That Labour Party should be ashamed of themselves. And 
it is time that this Keir Starmer manned up and growed up and showed up and got rid of her properly, force her out properly, get rid of her. This woman is not fit to be in Parliament. And now it has been revealed that Diane Abbott has been bombarding people yet again, um, accusing the Labour Party of fraudulent inquiry into her racism comments. Well, she is a shocking, disgraceful, appalling woman. She has said, I am the longest serving black MP. And then she says, yet yeah, there is a sentiment, and this is laughable, that as a black woman, as someone on the left of the party, that I will not get a fair hearing. This woman plays the race card too conveniently. She is disgraceful. She's shocking. She has not contributed anything to our lives. She is somebody who needs to be removed from Parliament and immediately removed. Enough is enough from this vile woman. Um, she is appalling. Um, she is accusing the Labour Party of targeting her. She's accusing everybody of targeting her. This is utterly ridiculous. A Labour Party spokesman said the Labour Party rightly expects the highest standards of behaviours from its elected representatives and has introduced an independent complaints process to investigate the cases. We will not be giving a running commentary on ongoing investigations. Well, that is not enough. Shame on the Labour Party. Do something about this disgrace. Jeremy Corbyn has come out and defended his long-term ally. He said the treatment of Diane Abbott, Britain's first female black MP, is a disgrace. The latest stitch-up represents yet another flagrant attack on local democracy, a lifelong anti-racist campaigner. Diane deserves so much better. So do party members being treated with contempt. I say, let's throw Diane Abbott out of politics. Diane Abbott does not represent decent people in this country. She is the bigot. She is a shameful abuser of Jewish, Irish and traveller people. And this revolting, horrible, nasty woman has done no good to this country. She doesn't contribute anything. She happily took money from the BBC to be on programmes, outside earnings, whilst criticising other MPs for taking outside earnings. She was getting paid to be on the politics show with Andrew Neil with um, Michael Portillo. Um, Jonathan Aitken was the godfather of her child. She seems to be able to cross political divides when it suits her personal goal. But she does not represent ordinary, decent people in this country. She jeers and attacks decent people in this country. She needs to be gone. I really don't like Diane Abbott. I think Diane Abbott is one of the worst politicians I have ever encountered. I am honoured that she blocked me on Twitter. The woman is a coward. I'm also blocked by Owen Jones, the most bigoted journalist in this country, another prat who wrote a book called Chavs. He is a big supporter of Diane Abbott and Jeremy Corbyn. Thank God this country will never have to have Jeremy Corbyn as its Prime Minister. Thank God we will never have the woman who couldn't even add up the price of a bus ticket as Home Secretary. She couldn't even work out the number of asylum seekers in this country. She couldn't work out the cost of a prisoner. She couldn't work out the cost of a police officer. The woman is useless and she achieved nothing as her, in her role in Parliament. I think this woman has irritated the nation for long enough and it's time to say good night and goodbye and good riddance to Diane Abbott. That is just my personal rant for the day. I don't like that one. Owen Jones, according to Amanda, is uh, something. Uh, I can't repeat that because I think it's a little offensive, but you're quite right. I do agree. Um, would I... Would you... No, oh, no, I'm not going to answer that. That's very rude. Um, 
Nav Singh. Ah, hello to the wonderful Nav. Wherever you are, Nav, we've missed you. Uh, you never bothered to come up and see me, so I don't know. One day we may meet again, but I don't know when that day will be. Anyway, there we go. Anyway, he said, well said, yes. Um, you'd like to know my opinion of Jacob Rees-Mogg. Well, I'll put Jacob Rees-Mogg in a very similar category to Diane Abbott. Jacob Rees-Mogg is a bigoted hypocrite, and he belongs in a different era. He is as ma much use to me as um, a chocolate teapot. We don't need people like Diane Abbott and Jacob Rees-Mogg in this country. We need people who actually are sensible, rational, and reasonable. Um, would I be an MP? No, I would not wish to be an MP. Um, when I was a child, I used to love politics. I became the the chairman of the local conservative association when I was about 14. I was obsessed with politics, and I thought I was very interested. And I used to go off to all these meetings, and I used to travel to the Houses of Parliament, and I would go to Conservative Party conferences, and I'd go off to these gatherings here and everywhere with MEPs and MPs, and and then I gradually realised that these people didn't really care about you or I. They're not interested in us. All they care about are their expenses. They don't represent you. They don't represent me. And gradually, when Brexit came, I came to realise that they just cared about them damn selves and how much money they could get out of the system. And no, I would not want to be part of that toxic pit of vipers. You know, there are 60 MPs currently under investigation out of the 650 in the House of Commons for sexually related um, offences. That is a ridiculous proportion compared to the population. Why on earth would you want to be associated with people of that type? We need to clear out this pit of vipers and start again. The whole system, we don't pay MPs enough. Pay them more, get better quality people. I think we, we are paying for a bag of bilge. They don't need to have an MP representing a constituency of 60,000. It should be, you know, an MP should represent 120,000 people because nobody writes to their MP. I'm one of the few people that does, but I would say most people don't bother. So. I think we need a better system. I say scrap the system, bring in proportional representation so we get fair representation. You know, in, in, in an area where, like this, where I'm living currently, um, you know, not everybody votes conservative, but it's the most likely that there will be a conservative elected here. But we should have a proportional system because, you know, some people here don't want a conservative. So if we split it fairly across the nation, we would get a fairer representation of MPs. I think it would be a far better system. Um, I didn't used to think this. Uh, uh, everybody will hear will vote for the magnet. Well, we vote for the magnet for many things. We love the magnet. It's a lovely thing. Um, it's a lovely local pub for local people. And um, my guests here tonight are big fans of the magnet. And they say cheers to that. Um, right. Someone called Viking Crypto Warrior. You can you can jolly well bog off. Um, you are a very rude person. Good night. Bye-bye to you. I do not tolerate people who come on here to try and provoke me about current criminal cases I am currently pursuing. So that if you want to start going on about that person, you can bog off. And whoever you are, you've sent me lots of nasty messages elsewhere on the internet about Russell Brand. Why don't you just go away and play on a railway track with whoever else you can have fun with? Uh, you are a stupid, ludicrous person. No, thank you. More gin, less politicians. Yes, I agree with that. Um, this glass is nearly finished, but don't worry, I've got another one next to me. Stocked and ready. So cheers to the next one. But anyway, toe rags like the Viking person can bog off. Um, he will not be welcome here ever again. And he can say whatever he wants on his bloody Twitter account as well. Thank you very much. Right. The next little horror we shall deal with, now we've dealt with Diane, is Boris Johnson. 
Boris Johnson's £265,000 Partygate legal bill has been paid by the Cabinet Office. The National um, Audit Office have said that this is deemed borderline and that it, it should not have been paid by the Cabinet Office. Why on earth are we paying to defend Boris Johnson, a man who broke the rules when we all had to follow the bloody rules? This is an utter shame and a disgrace. Boris Johnson was found to have committed five contempts of Parliament and still his bill has been paid. Why should we pay for that? Boris Johnson is a man who's been paid £5 million to write books he hasn't even bothered to write. He is a complete piece of toe rag. He's a disgrace. He is dis disgusting and wrong. And it is absolutely appalling that um, Liz Truss also has been claiming 23,310 as of her allowance as a former prime minister, despite having lasted 49 days. She got £23,000 extra for being one of the worst prime ministers in history. What is wrong with this Conservative Party? The Conservative Party used to be the party that represented people like us. It does not represent people like us anymore. It is the party of shame and disgrace. You would never have had this from the era of Margaret Thatcher, from Michael Heseltine, um, Alan Clark, um, Kenneth Clark, Bill Deeds, decent people. They went into politics for the right reasons. This, these, this bunch of creeps, they just take all they can. Nadine Dorries, the woman who hasn't even been to Parliament in one year, yet continued to claim for all the money she could and for her staff, most of whom were her children. So she benefited indirectly there while she was writing books while she was appearing on the dreaded GB News, the worst TV channel on the planet. What is wrong with these people? This is utterly disgraceful and wrong. Shame on the lot of them. Would you like me, they would like me to sing you a song? No, you would not. Please, no. Um, Paulie asks, has Boris been to Epstein's Island? I will say to you, no, Boris Johnson, Boris Johnson's only connection with Epstein um, is that Boris Johnson and his sister were both very close to Ghislaine Maxwell. Um, the dreadful Rachel Johnson wrote an article for The Spectator at the time of Ghislaine's conviction for abusing young people and sex trafficking young people. And she said, isn't it hard not to feel the bat squeak of pity for Ghislaine Maxwell? Well, that sums up the Johnson family. This is the Johnson family, which also includes Stanley Johnson, who, um, you know, his own ex-wife said he'd beaten her up. But he said he only did it once. You know, this is B Boris Johnson's father, who was accused by Caroline Noakes, a Conservative MP, of slapping her on the bottom. These, this is a charming family, this Johnson family, the family who have profiteered from all our suffering during these lockdowns. And he's now living in his £5 million Oxfordshire mansion where he wants to build his swimming pool and throw out the poor newts from the air, the garden so he can have his swimming pool for his drunken wife who he who called the, the police were called when they were throwing wine at one another over the sofa this is a charming family and this man was our prime minister what a national embarrassment and a shameful disgrace he was you know who appointed the likes of Nadine Dorries a woman who went off to be to eat um, bits of junk from animals in the jungle, um, you know, who didn't turn up to even Parliament for a year, who had Jacob rees Mogger, a hedge fund tycoon who's made a fortune from all our misery. 
shame on them all, Michelle Moan, a woman who got £232 million of public money from rubbish PPE that didn't work. Matt Hancock, who was busy shagging his secretary um, or assistant or whatever she was, you know, who happened to be married to someone else. This is not a good bunch of people. These are people that have ruined our lives, but we don't even have an effective opposition. Keir Starmer is useless. This man has done nothing to oppose. He's too busy going on desert island discs, going on about his vegan diet and how he has Friday night off and uh, he, he wouldn't be available on Friday if he was a prime minister because he'd be busy with his family. Well, yeah, great when someone presses the nuclear button, isn't it? What a waste of time he is. Absolutely appalling. Anyway, we shall now move along and I will talk about my book recommendations to you for the evening. Um, I was going to talk about this for much longer, but I will save that for another day. Um, given that the man next to me, or the gentleman next to me, would like to do the quiz. And I think some of you would like the quiz. But um, anyway, the book recommendation is The Monster Butler, written by Norman Lucas and Philip Davis. It's a book that you'll probably find hard to purchase, but it is published by Widenfield and Nicholson. Who, um, Lord Widenfeld was a wonderful gentleman and um, a fascinating person. I only ever met him a few times, but he was a, George Weidenfeld was a brilliant publisher and he he associated with amazing people from the Gettys to many others and consequently was able to publish the most brilliant series of books. But he published this book about a man called um, Archibald Hall, who was also known as Roy Fontaine. He was known as the killer butler, also the monster butler. And I have a friend whose um, grandparents were actually murdered by him, which is what got me interested in him. And I acquired this book myself in a secondhand bookshop in a literary town called Hay on Wye. And, um, and weirdly, my copy is covered in annotations. I don't know what the code is, but one day I shall work it out. Um, I shall go through it, and it even contains pages with random bits of photograph that someone's put in it. Um, they were clearly leaving me notes. Um, you know, here's another one. All sorts of different notes were put into this book at random pages and um, annotations. But no, he, this man was a butler who lived in the ritzier parts of London and he went around and he killed many of his victims and I would say this is a book that's actually worth reading and also there are some very good podcasts about Archibald Hall you can listen to them on these true crime channels um, there are a couple of YouTube videos you might be able to watch and you can learn about this dreadful weird man and he did live until the 1990s if i recall correctly and he literally was involved with absolutely everybody from the highs to the lows and he he massacred one of his own friends because he didn't do as he was told he was bisexual and he was weird and he pretended once to be an arab sheikh and he conned people. He was a very good con artist. You know, he dressed as an Arab sheikh and went into a hotel and conned people out of um, a load of diamonds. And he would he managed to uh, arrange for a Rolls Royce to drive him around as that. Um, the you know he, this was in between many jail stints that he he actually lived. Um, doing such things and he would visit jewelry shops and he would con people by being an Arab sheikh or he would do something else. Um, he was a fascinating, weird man. So I would urge you to have a read of the book about Archibald Hall, the monster butler, as he, they call him here. The Daily Mirror called him the killer butler. Um, I think, you know, either title is... Fair enough. Anyway, 
our final thing for the evening, now we've done 44 minutes, is our quiz. Uh, I don't know where my quiz book has gone. But we've now lost, oh, the quiz book is here. So we shall move on to our quiz. And we have our able Debbie McGee for the evening. Um, our wonderful friend Jono is going to be Debbie McGee for you this evening. He's being very quiet in the background, but he will be ready for our quiz. Your cats have fled. Oh, dear. Oh. I don't know where your cats fled to, but um, I'm sorry your cats ran away. Um, Carol says hi to Jono. Hello, Carol. Jono says hi to Carol and hi to you all, as does Matt. Um, oh, Christine adds, I had uh, bread with sugar on uh, with hot milk as a child. I don't quite know the significance of that. He won the quiz, so good luck to all. Um, right. Um, right, question one of this quiz. In which British town might you visit the Golden Mile and the Tower Ballroom? It's a very easy question, um, and it's a, as, as a Lancastrian brought up partly through my life, the winner is Bambi Debonair with Blackpool. In Nature, question two. What G describes long airborne lines of spider silk? The answer is not Solihull, Christine. It's not Edint. I don't know what that is. It's not Webbs. Bambi wins again with no. Gossamer. Bambi has leapt into the lead with the first two questions. You're very quick off the, the peg, Bambi. Question three. Which nation formerly surrendered to the Americans on the battleship USS Missouri on the 2nd of September, 1945. The winner is Pauli with Japan. Is this Richard again? Sorry? Is this Richard as in Pauli? Pauli Gallimberti. Is this the one that said to... Oh, we, 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 we don't know. No, we don't know. I've got this uh... Paulie that masquerades as Richard. Okay, Paulie. Right. In film, who won an Oscar for his his performance in The King and I? Um, one person has said Yul, but we need the full name. No, it was not just Yul. Um... Most people here cannot spell his name. Uh, most of them said the ball dude. Um, most of you have spelt his name incorrectly, but the first to actually answer, other than Doc Martens, who said George Michael, who was definitely not the answer, um, was Bambi Demonair. Yo Brenner, and you spelt it correctly, and you were actually the first to answer. Question five. What is the UK telephone dialing code for Glasgow? I had a phone call from Glasgow today, so I know the answer to this. It's not plus four four. Simon Coates wins with 0141. And meanwhile, Louise Jackson would like to me to wish her good luck with her job interview. Uh, Louise, we hope you do well in your job interview. We would like to know what you're going for a job interview for. And we very much hope that you are successful in your endeavors and that you thrive in your career. We, we have our fingers crossed for you and I'm sure the rest of the audience do. And there are a number of hundred people in this audience tonight. Ah, in science, question six, 
Which element has the chemical symbol AG? Not Matt Goss. The winner is DJ Smokey with silver. DJ Smokey. Silver. I oh, said Smokey with silver. Now, this is a question that does any Londoner of any fashion background would easily know, but the person in the background must not answer. Which B was a famous 1960s London fashion store opened by Barbara Holland Ski? Ski. <laughs> You were meant to be quiet. Joe wins with Bieber. The person in the background should not be interfering. But there we are. Is that a J-O-E or a J-O? Just a J-O. J-O. Ah. Is it true, question eight, that haemophilia is a disease mostly suffered by men? Yes or no? Um, DJ Smokey says true, which is effectively yes, so DJ Smokey gets the point. Question nine. In UK politics, which Conservative became MP for Henley in 1974? We have already mentioned him this evening. So, um, And his daughter is off on a wonderful trip to... Um, Nepal, and I've been following her journey. So there we go. Um, it was not Thatcher, and it wasn't Boris Johnson, who, though he became the MP subsequently. It wasn't Donald Trump. It wasn't uh, Heath. It wasn't Rhys Mogg. Angela says Tarzan, but that is not the correct answer, Angela, because that's a nickname. It was not Bob Monkhouse. Um, Clive Quinn says Heseltine, so I suppose we will accept that, Michael Heseltine. Um, it was not Jimmy Savile, it wasn't Silla Black, and it wasn't John Major, and it wasn't Margaret Thatcher, and it wasn't Barry McGuigan, and it wasn't Mary Hinge, whoever she may be. Hinge <laughs> <Hinging> bracket. <laughs> Some of these answers are. Off, off, off the leash in terms of their wildness. Um, right. Question 10. You're halfway through. Is a myrtle a species of bird or a species of plant? It wasn't Myra Hindley either. It's not a turtle. And it's not a. Um, the first correct answer is Doc Martens with the plant. It wasn't Mr. Blobby. Right. Question 11 In which ocean do the Seychelles lie? It's not Anthea Turner. <laughs> no, the winner is Claudia with Indian Ocean. Question 12. Is endocrinology the study of nerves or hormones? No. The correct answer is Bambi Debonair with hormones. The person in the background who is interrupting needs to be quiet. If the weakest link in the background does not be quiet, the weakest link will be evicted from the room. 
Question 13. In classical music, what B is a Spanish dance in moderate triple time? The correct answer is tea and toast and tarot, bolero. The person in the background said tango. She clearly does, know, does not know the words to start with B are not spelt. With a T is the first letter. In transport, which is the only London mainline rail terminus to share its name with a bridge over the Thames? A very easy question. It's not St. Pancras. St. Pancras is not next to the River Thames or near, near such. It's not Euston. It's not Paddington. It's not King's Cross. Claudia wins with Waterloo. Question 15. In which televised sport did giant haystacks become a household name? The winner is, it's not football, it is tea and toast with a wrestling. Question 16. In literature, what is the surname of Ogden, an American writer of elaborate light verse? The winner with Nash is Bambi Debonair. Right, question 17. In maths, how many prime ministers are there between 10 and 15? That is the question. I don't understand the question. The answer is, let's see, not one of you have got it yet. Oh, Linda Glass gets it with two, 11 and 13. I don't understand that question, but there we are. The answer is two. The next question. Which actress played the spurned lover in the 1987 film, Fatal Attraction? Mm -hmm. Linda Glass says she studied maths at university, so understood it. The winner of this one is Paulie with Glenn Close. Mm -hmm. well, the penultimate question, which Irish presenter fronted the BBC television, television quiz show Going for Gold? A good Irishman here. There's your clue. It wasn't Wogan. It wasn't Hugh Edwards. I don't think he's Irish. The winner is Matt Grant with Matthew Kelly. Uh, sorry, Henry. Oh, no, he's not the winner. No, he's got the wrong name. He hasn't. Uh, no, the winner, sorry, with Henry Kelly is Paulie. I'm afraid you got it wrong. You called him Matthew Kelly. That's no wrong. Anyway, the final question in the proverb, where does charity begin? Um, Bambi Debonair says at home, Doc Martin says home, um, but, but Doc Martin's was first. Do we allow home or at home? That's well, therefore, Bambi Debonair gets the point. So, have we a winner? Yes, Bambi by Country Bar. Bambi won by how many points? Well, she's got six as opposed to the next. 
Bambi Debonair got six points, and the next person who got three points was Paulie. was Paulie. So well done to them. And who came third? Well, we then got Gigi Smokey, Doc Martin, Claudia, and Tion. A whole variety came third. So well done to you all, and thank you very much for your participation. We've been going for exactly one hour and five seconds. So we say happiness galore to you all. Thank you very much for your kind participation, and we wish you all a very happy night. Um, as for people asking me if I will go on other channels to talk about um, this Russell Brand character, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I will let you know in due course. That's something that I will decide upon based upon rational thought processes. But I will not be going to talk about Russell Brand being an innocent person because I think Russell Brand is a very wicked, terrible person. I say good night to you all. Don't have nightmares. Good gardening to you all. Take care. Pip pip. Goodbye. <laughs>